with Prince Harry's memoir Spare finally here, it is being devoured by royal fans around the globe. The book is full of details that Harry has never shared before, and also contains a number of claims leveled at the royals, including his father King Charles and brother Prince William. But as those who have snapped up early copies of Spare come to the end of the book, there seem to be some accounts of events that contradict previous admissions made by Harry and his wife Meghan Markle. Meanwhile, some of the biggest talking points from previous interviews and TV shows the couple have given, get no mention at all. Here we take a look at some of them. One of the biggest talking points that emerged from Harry and Meghan's explosive chat with Oprah Winfrey was when they revealed the senior royal questioned the color of their unborn son's skin. The couple sent shockwaves through the British monarchy when they spoke of their disgust at concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when has born. It even prompted William to defend the royals by saying, We are very much not a racist family. However, this incident is not something that is picked up at by Harry and Spare. Harry was questioned about it in an interview to promote the book of the weekend on ITV, but he told News at 10's Tom Bradby they did not label the royal family racist. During the interview Bradby said to Harry, in the Oprah interview you accuse members of your family of racism, the Duke snapped back, saying no I didn't, adding the British press said that. In a further snipe at his family, Harry denied had described that as essentially racist, retorting, I wouldn't, not having lived within that family. The Duke once again refused to name the individual concerned, saying, the difference between racism and unconscious bias, the two things are different. But once it's been acknowledged, or pointed out to you as an individual, or as an institution, that you have unconscious bias, you, therefore, have an opportunity to learn and grow from that in order so that you are part of the solution rather than part of the problem. Otherwise unconscious bias then moves into the category of racism. Following their 2018 engagement, Meghan and Harry sat down for a joint interview in which they claimed they were set up on a blind date by a mutual friend. When asked whether it was a set up, both Harry and Meghan laughed, with the former Suits actress saying, yes, it was definitely a set up, it was a blind date. However, in their docu-series, which dropped on Netflix last month, the pair revealed they had actually faced time before meeting in the flesh for the first time at 76 Dean Street in London's Soho. But in his book Harry does not talk about them FaceTiming, only that they exchanged messages before their first date. Royal fans with a good memory will also question the page on which Harry discusses what Meghan wore on their first date at Soho House. Recalling their first meeting after weeks of messaging, Harry says she was wearing a black sweatshirt, jeans and heels. He adds that while he knows nothing about fashion, he later admits he only shops once every six months, and he only goes to TK Maxx. He says he could tell she was chic. He admires her no-frills look at their first meeting, describing her as heart, attack beautiful. However, Meghan has previously revealed that she wore a blue dress for their first meeting. When she was reunited with her stunning Givenchy wedding dress for an ITV documentary, Meghan revealed she had a thread from the dress sewn into her veil as her something blue. Seeing the dress for the first time since her wedding during ITV's Queen and Commonwealth, she said, My goodness, it's amazing, isn't it? Somewhere in here, Terry's a piece of. Did you see it? She points out when inspecting her veil, the piece of blue fabric that's stitched inside. It was my something blue. It's fabric from the dress that I wore on our first date. It's nice to see it again. It's beautiful. However, it's possible that there was just a bit of confusion as Harry recalls Meghan wearing a blue dress on their second date. Another claim that sparked confusion from Harry and Meghan's Oprah interview was the claim they married two days before their Windsor wedding in the Garden of Kensington Palace. Meghan told Oprah, you know, three days before our wedding, we got married. No one knows that. She added, but we called the Archbishop and we just said, look, this thing, this spectacle is for the world but we want our union between us. So, the vows that we have framed in our room are just the two of us in our backyard with the Archbishop of Canterbury. However, in his book, Harry clears up the confusion in that the ceremony in the garden was unofficial, non-binding, except in our souls. In their explosive Oprah chat, Meghan talked about experiencing suicidal thoughts when she was pregnant with Archie and claimed she was prevented from getting help. It was also something she talked about in the Netflix series and claimed she wanted to go to a place to get help during her mental health struggles, but wasn't allowed because of how that would look for the institution. Harry said he was devastated at not being able to protect his wife while she was having suicidal thoughts and said he hated himself for how he handled the situation. In spare, 
He details the moment he found Megan sobbing and how she told him she didn't want to live anymore. He then talks about how they later went to an engagement at the Royal Albert Hall that evening as Megan didn't trust herself to be at home alone. But when it came to seeking help for Megan and that being refused, he chose not to write about it in the book. One of Harry's most explosive claims in his Netflix docuseries is that his brother William screamed and shouted at him during the so called Sandringham Summit. The Queen summoned the now King and his sons William and Harry to her Norfolk estate to try to resolve the Megxit crisis in January 2020, but it was ultimately decided Harry and Meghan could not be half in and half out. And it is in this meeting that Harry said William left him terrified by screaming and shouting at him. However, there is no mention in the book of William screaming and shouting or Harry being terrified. Harry only says his brother complained about a story in the morning papers suggesting that he was the reason we were leaving. In the same section of Spare, Harry recounts talking with his brother in Sandringham's gardens and says he was braced for a lecture. But he adds that it didn't come and that Willie was subdued. He wanted to listen. For the first time in a long time my brother heard me out, and I was so grateful. <laughs>